The big issue with many DeFi protocols is that they rely on showing a big shiny APR as its marketing ploy. And if you choose a conservative yield as a DeFi protocol, another protocol will always be ready to call you and bring a higher yield to the table. If a single number is the only thing projects are really competing over, we're all going to be caught playing this DeFi hot potato and you don't really want to know who's the one who's going to lose there. It's us. Yeah, it's definitely us. And take it from me, I've had several companies come to me and try to get me to market their big new DeFi protocol and half the time I'm thinking you better be adding a zero to that number if you want to mess around with me big boy. Anyways, in my opinion, they're all just wasting their time on these projects because DeFi GameFi is definitely where it's at. These projects make DeFi interesting by adding the complexities of a game to dictate how much you make yield farming. Stay tuned because we're going to feature a DeFi game that is going to continue to revolutionize the DeFi landscape. Hello everyone, this is Brent from Enter Your Wealth and I'm so happy that you're here today because we're exploring one of the blue chip DeFi games in the space currently. Enter DeFi Kingdoms, a play to earn MMO RPG built on a strong DeFi protocol. DeFi Kingdoms features DEXs, liquidity pools, NFTs, and my favorite part, the beautiful music. What recently has got me excited is the launch of the new kingdom, Crystal Veil, which moves the game away from the Harmony Network and onto the Avalanche blockchain. Well, kind of. On April 1st, Crystal Veil's new Jewel X Jewel liquidity pair was showing yields of upwards of 4,000 APR. To add to the excitement, the launch showcased something never done before, the launch of its own subnet, DFK. Okay, only nerds would really be excited about this, but it's actually super exciting. If you don't know what an Avalanche subnet is, without getting too technical, it's just a virtual piece of the Avalanche network that is isolated and has its own rules that the developers end up writing. And just like other popular nets, such as Ethereum, Polygon, you can just toggle it on MetaMask and we're going to be connected to the DFK subnet. The benefits include allowing the gas to be paid in its native token, in this case, Jewel, which allows DeFi kingdoms to introduce deflationary aspects to this previously inflationary coin. On top of this, it also reduces gas prices and transaction speeds if compared to any of the congested networks that we're all used to using, such as the actual Avalanche blockchain. The tokenomics of DeFi kingdoms are certainly awesome too. They have a system that prevents yield dumping in which a greater portion of the stake rewards are locked and unlocked over time depending on how many epics you stake through. Check out mine and the official Medium article that better explains how this all works in the description. So here's the million dollar question. Am I invested? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not invested with a million dollars. But if you didn't know, I'm gonna turn zero dollars into a hundred thousand dollars with play to earn games. It's a challenge that I've been doing on TikTok. So if you haven't seen that already, I definitely recommend you check that out. Anyways, I decided that I was gonna take $800 from my challenge and put it into DeFi Kingdoms. And honestly, I wanted a FOMO in at launch but I decided that that was way too risky, especially after seeing that Jewel had pumped for 14 days straight. In trading, this almost never happens and really is not a great time to ever get in. Crystal Veil delivered a whopping 4,000% APR, which is kind of why people were going crazy. This was far more than I was expecting and I think anyone really was expecting. I played it cool and sat on my hands while Jewel dropped about 50% in about seven days. And at around $530 average price, I aped in completely with my $800 staking into Jewel X Jewel, which was yielding about 2,000 APR. I plan on staking this long term, so if you want to see how this investment turns out, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel as I continue to make DeFi Kingdoms content. As of right now, these are my rewards. I don't know what I'm putting up here, but these are my rewards. At the time of this recording, I think it is a good time to get in, but do your own research and make sure this is not the greater portion of your portfolio and matches with your risk tolerance. Since I've got in, there have been more liquidity pairs introduced, such as Crystal Jewel, Crystal AVAX, Crystal USDC, but I'm playing it safe currently and staying with Jewel X Jewel as I think it's the best long-term hold as Jewel holds the best utility in my opinion and I love that there's no risk of impermanent loss. If you don't know what impermanent loss is, here it is. 
Let's go for the tokenomics of DeFi Kingdoms, and this is after every transaction. So 1% is burned. That's pretty just great. Really nothing more to say, awesome, burning tokens is needed to introduce a deflationary aspect to an inflationary coin. 10% is sent to the bank to reward X Jewel, X Crystal holders. This is the safe way to get a yield in the game without having to put in a liquidity pair. You can do this at the jeweler. We'll go over this in a later video. 30% is sent to the quest rewards fund. This is yet another way you can earn and we'll go over that in the next video. 5% is sent to the dev treasury which is used for future game development and bounties. The team really has delivered time and time again so I'm excited to see that they're putting a great portion of the treasury back into the game. 17% is sent to the marketing for advertisements and airdrops. Marketing is really good, especially when you have an awesome product like DeFi Kingdoms. And if you're a holder, you get a benefit from receiving airdrops, so that's cool too. 17% is sent to the Founders Fund. This is just paying the devs for their hard work, which I think they really deserve. In conclusion, DeFi Kingdoms is a game in which its reputation precedes itself, and it certainly doesn't underdeliver on the hype. With solid tokenomics and is early to adopt many innovative technologies, such as utilizing the AVAX subnet, I'm dying to see what their team does next. There are so many technical aspects to this game that it's better to go read the white paper yourself. I didn't even mention the NFTs, which you all know I love, but there is so much more to cover and I'll continue to make DeFi Kingdoms content in the future. So, and in terms of investing, if you're looking to get DeFi exposure and earn some nice APR to some cool music, I really don't think there is a better option than DeFi Kingdoms. Always remember to do your own research and this is not financial advice. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Later.